the Chicago River on a gorgeous summer night in the Windy City. And down the road in Bridgeview at Chicago Red Stars trying to make it five wins out of six, hosting Orlando Pride, which is looking to turn things around. There's Mallory Pugh, three goals on the season for head coach Rory Dames. And across the way, she's back from Tokyo where she starred at the Olympics for Brazil. It's the sixth time World Player of the Year, Marta, back in the starting lineup for interim head coach Becky Burley. It's Chicago hosting Orlando next on Paramount Plus. The Windy City on a Sunday night to wrap up this weekend in NWSL play. Chicago, one of the hottest teams in the league, hosting Orlando Pride from SeatGeek Stadium down the road in Bridgeview. We look at the NWSL standings. Matt Peterson with former University of Georgia and US U20 national team forward Marion Crowder. Portland has asserted itself atop the league. But during this Olympic break, Chicago has climbed to a tie for third. Yeah, Chicago is on a hot streak right now with four wins in their last five. And really, North Carolina Courage made a huge jump last night as they took down Gotham. And what a showing from O.L. Reign. That is a side finding really good form, and they're finally starting to see the results to prove it. Orlando was atop the league through seven games, but now winless in six. They're trying to get back above the playoff line. For Chicago, with the listen there, at the Olympics, Cassie Miller has been outstanding. Four saves against Washington. She was the player of the match. Yeah, an incredible performance from her last weekend. But really, the transition from them has been seamless. She has stepped into this role. She's a calming presence, very good with her feet. And she's going to be under some firepower this afternoon. Meanwhile, for Orlando, Sydney LaRue, six goals on the season, tied in the Golden Boot Race, and with old friend Ali Krieger pushing forward for this goal last week in North Carolina. And Sydney LaRue, you saw it in this whole buildup. She is so patient with her runs, and the ability of her to shift defenses, to exploit spaces, is like no other in this league. She'll need to be on fire to get a result and three points for her team tonight. Here is the starting lineup. It's the second game in charge for Becky Burley, the former coach, University of Florida. Back from the Olympics and back in the starting lineup, Marta and Allie Riley. It's almost hard to focus on any other player but Marta making a return. Her and Becky Burley met just a couple of training sessions ago, so it's so nice to see her back in the lineup. To see her and Sydney LaRue paired together will be nice. Doherty Howard gets the start at that sixth role for her former head coach, Becky Burley. And for Chicago, under Rory Dames, the longest tenured coach in the league, Pew out on the left wing, Sharples and Wright partner at center back. And Gordon, she has just now set a club record for most consecutive regular season minutes played. Congratulations to her, but it's going to be Caliprico and Gatra who are really going to have to do some creative movements underneath that front three to break down Orlando's defense. Can Chicago make it five out of six? Can Orlando snap a six game winless run? We will find out as the NWSL weekend ends in Chicago. It's the Red Stars and the Pride after the break. Ready to go from SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview. And underway, the referee is Luis Guardia. Chicago in the black uniforms, Orlando in its road whites. Matt Peterson with former University of Georgia and US U20 national team forward, Marion Crowder. What are you looking forward to with this matchup tonight? A lot. I, I think, one, this matchup for both of these teams can really shake up the table. You know, Orlando is really looking to get back on the right foot after starting out the season so strong and then just not finding a lot of consistency in the last four or five games. But Chicago has been in a hot streak and they are looking to continuously climb that table. So I think whichever way this result goes, it's going to be exciting. But 
from a tactical perspective, Orlando has the ball now, and so we'll focus on them. I think we need to see a lot of next play speed from them. That was something that Becky Burley talked specifically about. You know, don't don't linger on mistakes, right? We're all figuring this out. What can you do next that's right? Focus on that. Obviously, we just saw a close-up of her, Marta being back in the lineup. She is always going to be a player to watch when she's on the field. And then for Chicago, really, ride this confidence. You know, you're playing. You got four wins in your last five games. So continue to make a commitment to playing as a collective unit. That's really what Rory Dames attributed this hot streak to was his team's willingness to buy in and play as a unit. So can you continue that, ride this momentum wave, and just continue to knock on the door of that top spot? First meeting since 2019. Hard to believe in the NWSL, but kind of a scheduled quirk that it, mm -hmm. about two years since they've last met. And Orlando's had success in Chicago over the years. Here's Courtney Peterson. Back at her left back position. She was in the midfield last week as Orlando got a point at North Carolina. Heavy touch from Krieger. Watt trying to get on the end of it, battling Peterson. Watt wins it, Watt is in, and it's cleared off the line. Watt nearly with the goal, but off the stomach, and Chicago nearly has an opener inside three minutes. And that's just great individual effort from Watt, just to keep pressing forward, keep getting in the tackles. She found herself in some open space, but great recovery from the Orlando defense to keep this game scoreless for now, but Ooh, what an opening first few minutes. And and one thing that we didn't mention in the open, and as broadcasters, we probably don't talk about enough because sometimes we're not there, like in this case, but you can see on your television screen the wind, right? The wind in this game is going to be a factor and something that potentially Orlando's not used to. What a chance for Watt. Did everything well, but the defender mm -hmm. was on the goal line to block it really saving the day as Harris could not keep it out. Hill, good run, good ball up this left sideline. Chicago on the front foot here in the first four minutes. Watt on the edge of the box. Watt passed it to Hill, who was in an offside position. Here's the chance a moment ago for Watt as it was lost by Krieger. Yeah, a poor touch from Krieger in a bad part of the field. And then really, I mean, Watt was just on the defender's back. She didn't have possession of it. She just continued to press forward and press forward, gets, gets a look on goal. But as we said, well recovered from Orlando. And maybe, maybe you get that first scare out from under you. You take a deep breath now. You feel like you've been just jolted into the game and you can start to play with a little bit more purpose, a little bit more possession. Watt did well to keep it in. Long touch is cleared. It's going to Jan's daughter. Only player to play every minute this season for Orlando, the 32-year-old from Iceland. Another run from Watt. Into the box, has two runners. Off Krieger, corner kick coming for Chicago. And one thing that Becky Burley also talked to us about was dealing with the athleticism of this Chicago front three. We are seeing that very early in this game, just how quick, how strong this front three for Chicago really is. And this is what I love about a, an attack like Chicago, right? They stretch defenses and they just continue to push, push, and they get deep into your attack and create corner kick opportunities like this. Mallory Pugh from the corner towards the near post. Alive for Chicago inside the six yard box and finally clear. Sustained pressure for Orlando. They've been defending their box for the first five minutes. Here comes Chicago again in the box. Squared up and clear. Orlando just cannot get out of its own end right now. No, and that's, I mean, that's what needs to happen. Honestly, right there, you need a big clearance and then you just need to push, push forward, just get out from away 
your own 18. But credit to Chicago. They're doing well for the high press in the first couple of minutes. Here's Peterson in space. Marta. Good vision. Picks out Vigiano. And now Orlando can take a deep breath. Yep, take a deep breath. And one thing that is easy to hone in on right now, because we can see the full field, was the fact that Chicago has made a really conscious effort in the last four or five games to work on their defensive mentality, right? Their, de their collective defensive presence. We saw every single Chicago player back behind the ball. They're okay being without the ball. And Rory Dames even said, you know what, we'll give up some possession. We'll give up some possession if that means that we're not susceptible to quick transition moments. And so that was a great example of all their players, inclu including Mallory Pugh and Kalia Watt, getting back behind the ball. Nice touch from Hill. Here come the Red Stars up this left side. Hand ball, free kick to Orlando. Orlando winless in six, four losses and two draws after starting the year unbeaten in seven. They were atop the NWSL after seven games. Becky Berlin, her second season since taking over for Mark Skinner. It's her great career, 26 years at Florida, over 500 wins, 14 SEC titles. Back to Harris who clears. An NCAA title, another college cup as well. She's been very candid with us on these calls these last couple weeks about adjusting to the pro game, learning the substitution patterns, and and understanding what it's like to coach professionals. And isn't that a breath of fresh air? You know, you have this coach that has more accolades, more honors than most coaches ever dream of. Good cross and what a save on the backside from Cassie Miller. It took one chance for Orlando and it's Jody Taylor on a wonderful ball from the left wing. And that was exactly, this is exactly what Orlando's gonna need to see more of, those quick transition moments. Rory Dames of the Chicago said that we need to limit the energy of Orlando by controlling the game early. So far, Chicago's been able to do that, but that was just a glimpse of how quickly Orlando can break through lines. Jody Taylor, third appearance for Orlando after signing July 8th. Last club was Olympic Lyon. Peterson will throw it in. Great delivery from the left back who got forward to swing it in for Taylor. Nice win. Here comes Chicago, it's Mallory Pugh, dispossessed. Great timing from Jan's daughter. And there's Ali Rowley back from the Olympics. Three starts for New Zealand. She's up to 137 caps for her country. Krieger. For Peterson, walk back to defend. And Burley was, as you said, honest with us about substitution patterns. Again, you take it for granted as a fan, broadcaster, player of a legendary college coach adjusting to the pro game that it's seamless. But she said it's different having the limited substitutions. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, of course she knows that's the case, right? She's very aware of the rules of the game, but until you do it, you don't really know how that can change your game plan. And so it really was a breath of fresh air to hear that from her. And I loved it. There was a question asked, you know, what what's different at this level? What's the same? And she, you know, she was very honest about that too. A lot's the same, but the ability of these players to implement changes so quickly has been so impressive to her. Here's Pew, edge of the box, shot was blocked. Second chance, saved by Harris. There's Morgan Gottra had a Penalty goal last week in the 3-1 win. Opportunistic, former Virginia Cavalier. Direct from Krieger. Sarah Gordon, you mentioned it 
her in the starting lineup since her 36th straight start. She's got 90 minutes in her last 34 starts, a club record over 3,000 straight minutes for Sarah Gordon. Tina Malazzo, first touch from Pugh. Colaprico well way to ball. Centered and clear. Another shot blocked. That was from Motts. Melissa Mott's 10th season in Chicago. She signed with Chicago in the WPSL Elite in 2012 and then allocated to the Red Stars for the inaugural 2013 NWSL season. Peterson and Watt. A lot of battles here in the first 12 minutes between those two. Great kick to Chicago. Colaprica will come over. Mike Mott's one of the longest tenured players on this team. Seventh season, she was drafted in 2015 by Rory Dames. Was the rookie of the year that season. Two-time second 11 in the NWSL. Colaprico serves. Taylor tried to nod it to LaRue. Taylor applying pressure. Malazzo. Watt comes central. Now Rachel Hill has options right and left. Gets a run from Pew, tries to find Pew. It'll be a Chicago throw in. And right now, what's working for Chicago in the attack is, is just their unpredictability, right? You saw Kalia Watt going in centrally, Mallory Pugh making that run centrally, but she, what you didn't see is Gatra making that run from a deep 10 position up on that left flank. And so that's very hard to defend when you don't know what runs are coming from what position on the field and when you have midfielders that are willing to join in the attack, that's very, very difficult to defend. Peterson. Turner and Krieger, the center backs for Becky Burley tonight. Direct, Taylor is gonna get there. It's Taylor in. And against the run of play, Orlando jumps in front. Perfect ball over the top. Taylor timed her run well. And it's a first goal for Orlando for Jody Taylor. Perfectly timed run. Perfect finish. A great ball over the top. I mean, she's well covered. She just wins the foot race does well to collect the ball, cuts off the defender, and is just so quick in that release, right? She didn't take three or four seconds to decide where she wanted to put it on goal. She took that touch back across her body to her strong right foot, curled it into the post. And well done from Orlando to get a goal against the momentum. I mean, these first 15 minutes have been Chicago. They've locked them in, they've pressed well, They've attacked efficiently, no goal to show for it, but that just shows how quickly Orlando can make something out of nothing. That's one of their biggest strengths is their transitional ability, their speed up top, and that was on display in that goal. Stunning for Chicago, really. They've owned the first 15 minutes and then one ball over the top and they're behind one nothing. I mean, to be, extremely honest that is exactly if i was playing in this game this is exactly what i would feel like i would just be like are you kidding 
you know, it, it kind of has that mentality where you feel like, oh, this game is ours, this game is ours, a goal is coming. Now, granted, there's so much time to play, right? There's no need to start forcing things or to get in a rut, but you do have that momentary just, what? Reaction. Second ball won by LaRue, dispossessed by Colaprico. All the way back to Harris. Harris is the all-time leader in appearances tonight. 74 for Ashlyn Harris, passing Danny Weatherholt. The all-time Orlando appearance list. Peterson for Jan's daughter. Good defending at the back. Here's Watt. Gotcha. Patient here from Chicago. Good pressure. Arta clips it over the top. Taylor's offside. From England, played at Oregon State. 51 caps and 19 goals for England. Been with the club exactly a month after signing in July. And just what Orlando was expecting when they signed her a month ago. Isn't it nice when, you know, you sign someone to score goals and then they score goals? <laughs> That's always just such a breath of fresh air. And, and I say that with all seriousness because that's not an easy thing to do. You know, scoring goals and getting in a rut as a team offensively can really be a hard thing to come out of. And, and we've seen that with Orlando in the past, you know, four or five games, winless in their last seven. But last weekend we saw improvement. We saw some confidence in that attack. We saw them taking a lot more chances. Yeah, it ended in a 1-1 draw. But now you see them taking the front foot, using that goal to change the momentum of things right now. Great right on the far side to the delight of the home fans. Sarah Gordon, one of the fan favorites in Chicago. Now one. Malazzo is joining. Peterson wins it for Orlando. And we've seen the last few weeks, Mary, and a few newcomers score their first goal and maybe lead to something. Lisa Mare twice last week for OL Range. She got a third this weekend. We saw Nadia Nadim in Louisville's win just a few hours ago. Get her first goal. But these veteran goal scorers, all it takes is one to really get things going. I mean, OL Rain is a prime example of that. You know, you look at Lisa Mayer, an absolute screamer that she scored last weekend. She gets another one this weekend. Then you're seeing Jess Fishlock start to feel the confidence. I mean, confidence is contagious. And for a team like Chicago, for a team like OL Reign, for a team even like Orlando, when you have all these attack attacking threats, sometimes it's hard to, to really figure out how to mesh it all, right? But it just takes one, exactly like you said, and it just takes one to start building that confidence both from an individual perspective and as a collective unit. That's Sarah Waldmo. Trade from Sky Blue from a UCLA Bruin. And it sounds sort of counterintuitive, but it kind of plays into Jody Taylor's favor. She had nothing to do with those first 15 minutes. She's sitting at half the halfway line, saving her energy. Mm -hmm. That's her first real sprint to the game, and she gets a goal from it. Absolutely. And I mean, when you know you're fast, that, that's what you do, right? It, it's your job, and you'll see her if you just kind of hone in on the space she occupies. 
she's gonna teeter that line between being offside and not, right? She's, she's gonna be right there, and that's her job. Her job is to stretch defenses and make the back line think twice about stepping up. And when you do that, you start to create gaps, right? So if she makes Chicago question, oh, let's step up, let's get up, because we're not sure that we can beat her in a foot race, well, then there's this huge gap between the Chicago back line and the defensive midfielders. And that leaves a lot of space for Orlando to be creative underneath her. We saw Rory Dames, and he singled out the collective defending of, for the success during this four wins and five run for Chicago, which has spanned the Olympic games with players away. And he said, as you mentioned in the outset, maybe not too concerned with possession, moments where you're not taking too much risk on offense to keep your defensive shape intact, even when you have the ball. Yeah, and I mean, he also mentioned they've gone down in three of the four wins that they've had, and they've been able to come back and get three points. So that obviously speaks to the effort of the group as a whole and not just one player. And I know as a forward, sometimes it, it can be a lot for us to <laughs> to want to come back and help defensively. But that's what takes a good player kind of to that great level, right? So you're seeing it right now in Kalia Watt, in Mal Pugh. They're doing the defensive work. And what it's allowing them to do is be in dangerous positions because those are two players that are extremely good 1v1. So why not get them the ball around the midfield mark and let them just run at players? Like Morgan Gotra lost to contact Len, she'll go off to receive a new one from the athletic trainer. The moment, Chicago down a player. Contacts are pesky things. Yes. <laughs> Krieger. Good touch from Taylor. She allows the midfield to join. Picks her head up. Try to switch for LaRue. Easily handled by Chicago. And the thing that Dames talked about with this collective defending and the awareness in possession, he said, we've been better not leaving as much space for opponents to exploit in transition. What's ironic is that's exactly how the goal came about. So he's he's dead right. That's where his weaknesses lie. Now it's just a matter of execution. And to be honest, Chicago has been so much better about that through through the last couple of games. Right now it's it's just a matter of, all right, look, we switched off for a second, but kind of to our our help, we have a lot of game left to play, right? So this game is nowhere near over, and Chicago has already shown, they show in the first 15 minutes just how dangerous they can be on the attack. They can create something from nothing. So I think this game is far from over. I think defensively they just need to continue to be switched on because that's what Orlando's looking to do. They're looking to exploit that transitional space. Good work from Pew. She finds Hill. Now on the far side, it's isolated with Gontra, who's back on the field with the new contact lens. Making sure it went in the right way. Morgan Gatra, formerly Morgan Bryant, a starter for Jill Ellis at the 2015 World Cup. She's thinking to herself, do I want LASIK? <laughs> is, it, is it worth it? Mallory Pugh will take this corner. Good ball, back post. Sent back in by Watt and handled by Harris. Set pieces are gonna be something to really hone in on for Chicago. They're so good in the attack that they're they're able to get deep into their final third and create, you know, deep restarts, 
corner kicks, throw wins. If they can continue to execute those, I mean, two of their three goals last weekend came off set pieces, then they're just going to run with this game, I think, eventually. The outlet from Gatra. Pugh tried the first time cross. Goal kick to Orlando. Pugh scored in the 3-1 win. As Chicago won last weekend. Continued high press from Chicago. Here comes Gordon out of the back. One of many Illinois natives on the Chicago roster. A tumble off the ball. Referee had a good view of it, waves it up. That was Pugh and Ali Riley for Orlando. Krieger finds Peterson. Jody Taylor, the opening goal against the run of play. Direct ball over the top from Krieger. Taylor's first goal for Orlando. It comes in her third appearance. That's great build up. Back for Taylor. Taylor is in again. This time, a few shirts to deal with. And a nice tackle. Had to get it right on the edge of the box. Tatum Malazzo did just that. Crunching challenge that time. It's Amy Turner against Rachel Hill. Yeah, they are. Orlando saying, we're here to fight. Don't play with us. There have been a couple in the last few minutes. I'm surprised that's not a card. I mean, she did not even go for the ball. Just entirely in the back of Rachel Hill. I'm as surprised as you, Amy Turner. From England, played at Hofstra. Restart from Kayla Sharples. Another Illinois native played at Northwestern. Riley's clearance. Pew peaks as she picks it up in the corner. Waldmo. To draw. Back for Waldmo. Intended for Watt, well defended. I would have loved to see her continue that run towards the end line. She still had maybe one or two touches to get there. And if she would have done that, you continue to push forward through that end line. And then you're just drawing defenders closer for a possibility of an own goal. But it would have opened up a seam, a channel for a delayed run at the top of the box and a potential one-time finish. Krieger heads away. On back by Pew. Pew in a good pocket of space. Face is up. What a save from Harris. Full stretch to her left to deny Mallory Pugh. And you start to wonder how many Ashton Harris has left in her. I feel like every single game we see her, she is making this exact save. Fully outstretched, off her line, bats it away. And that's when Mal Pugh's at her best. When she's turned, faced up, 1v1. She doesn't need a big window. She didn't even hardly look up. She just, when you have a player that has that kind of an understanding of defenses and the way they shift, it, it can be so dangerous. Colaprico from the corner. Watt will run it down on the opposite side. Good delivery from Watt, headed away by LaRue. Tough to defend Pugh when she's in that pocket trying to find the gap between the defensive midfielder and the center back. Here's Pugh, top of the area. Could not keep it down. She's also a player that's going to roam, right? She's going to just kind of find different pockets of space and Really, all of the Chicago attackers are going to do that. They're not going to sit. There's no right, left, center. It's we're the front three, we're the front four or five. 
we're just going to make runs that shift you as a defense. And that's what makes them really hard to defend, like we said earlier. But we're talking about the Chicago attack, and it's Orlando that's up one nil. And so right now the transitional ability for Orlando is the storyline through the first 30 minutes. Hydration break, it's 90 degrees in Bridgeview. Humidity makes it feel like 97 even in these early evening hours. Oh Lord. Visit nwslshop.com to find your club's latest gear. Support your favorite NWSL club with the latest tees, sweatshirts, hats, novelties, and more. And Marion Crowder, that's where you can shop. I know you're hinting towards the racing Louisville <laughs> fans to maybe send you a jersey, yeah. but you can find one there. Yeah, if there are any Louisville fans watching this game, find me on Twitter. <laughs> I, will, I will send you my address to give me one of those cool black uniforms. But I'm not going to lie, the Chicago ones are pretty sick too. Windy, warm evening as Rory Dames gives instructions there to Kalia Watt. And Mallory Pugh. Is there anything he might be telling his group during this hydration break? I think just to continue what they're doing, right? <laughs> the thing is, they haven't played bad. In fact, they've played very good and they've executed the game plan very well, which was to have high energy, to high press up the field, and to lock things in. And for the most part, they've done that. I mean, really for change. They just need to have some patience, continue to do what they're doing, and continue to trust that what they bring from a talent perspective and as a collective unit is good enough to get them back in this game. Back underway after the hydration break. Throw to Orlando. Peterson will take it. Peterson, a goal and an assist. It's her 14th start tonight. She's from Michigan, played at Virginia. A lot of touches for Watt in this first half. Katra does well to get out of that tight space. Colaprico. One back, Hayon's daughter. And now it's Riley back from the Olympics. Marta as well, she played all 120 minutes. In the quarterfinals, Brazil lost to Canada on penalties. It was a scoreless through 120. Marta made her penalty in the shootout, but Canada prevailed. Such a heartbreaking moment. A lot of shootouts in the women's mm -hmm. football tournament at the Olympics, ending with Canada over Sweden. Cassie Miller, she'll restart. From Arizona, went to Florida State. Proud of our producer, Karina Dolan. Signed as a free agent, now in her second season with Chicago, before Chicago, PSV Eindhoven, and in Cyprus with Apollon Ladies. She's been a big piece. We've seen that all across the NWSL. Some of these goalkeepers getting a chance during the Olympics and stepping up. Watt leaves it for Pew. Two versus four. It's actually Hill. Hill, good run. Hill gets it back. Cannot hit the target. And this is what Mallory Pugh does so well. And it's, it's something that a lot of people may not notice. But in this run specifically, it's 2v4. You're obviously numbers down. Rachel Hill's run wasn't necessarily doing much to help Mallory Pugh, to be honest. I would have loved to see Rachel Hill peel out a bit wider and open up maybe a different scene for Mallory Pugh. But there was a slight touch inside that drew the center back to her, and it created this, this seam that wasn't there before. And that's what a good quality attacker can do. They can shift defenses with their dribbling abilities, with their the way that they look at other players on the field. And Mallory Pugh is a great example of that.
It was direct from Krieger to Martin. Now a throw in for Orlando. Jody Taylor's goal, the difference in this game. Direct over the top from Krieger. Ty Taylor got behind three Chicago defenders, took a few touches and scored. First Orlando goal. Our last time in the NWSL. 14 goals, four assists, and 47 appearances with O.L. Reign. Orlando had to get the rights to Jody Taylor from North Carolina just to bring her back to the NWSL. Here's Marta. Peterson. LaRue. This is good for Orlando. There's options in the box. Laid back. Good strike and well saved by Cassie Miller. We look at teams like North Carolina, and that's what's really coming to my mind right now is a team that needs a lot of chances to score goals. Orlando, to me, is the complete opposite. They're a team that they will have two, three shots on goal, but they all may be goals. And so it's so interesting to see the different dynamics that different teams bring. And right now, again, Chicago has the better of the half. Orlando has the goal. So what does Chicago, you have about nine, eight minutes or so with stoppage time left in this first half. So there's still plenty that can happen. But if you were to ask me what they should do going into the locker room, I would tell you as Chicago, just continue to be patient, continue to do the things you're doing. But the big key is to limit this transitional ability of Orlando Pride. Go to Jan's daughter. Only Orlando player to play every minute. Can see why with the toughness. The 14th straight start tonight. The restart from midfield. No one on the end of it. Now the prior chance, by the way, came to Marissa Vigiano. As we said, 74th appearance for the club. Congratulations to Ashlyn Harris. Surpassing Danny Weatherholt most all time for the Orlando Prime. Ashlyn Harris just has some swag. You know, every time you see her play, it's just there's there's a confidence about her, not a cockiness, but it just a strong confidence that I know I'm good. And I, as a player, you love to see that in your goalkeeper. You feed off that kind of energy. Good draw with the turn. Releases Hill. Hill runs it down. Hill, cut off by Peterson. That's good from Taylor. Just great at receiving the ball and allowing the midfield to join. She is great back to goal, and that's something that not a lot of forwards in this league, not, not a lot can be said about the back to goal ability. A lot of forwards in this league are very good 1v1. They're very good faced up. You're seeing three of them on Chicago right now. But to have a player that you can just ping balls off of and get other players involved, I mean, that can set you up in so many different ways from an attacking perspective. Becky like Burley told us Riley and Marta would be available. She wasn't sure how many minutes. Here we are on Sunday night, they're in the starting lineup. And nearly through the first half. Jan's daughter all the way back to Ashlyn Harris. A throw in now to Chicago. And you know, if you're Orlando, you're up one nil. You're almost to the second half. To me, there's no need for balls like that. You know, that they're giving you space. They're giving you the ability to play in the back. You know that. Be confident in what your center backs can do. Be confident that you can hold possession through the outer parts of the field centrally. 
and limit the giveaways because that's when Chicago is very good. They'll wait and they'll wait and then they'll pounce, right? They'll put you in this pocket of space and then they'll move from that pocket of space to find the opposing attacker like a Mallory Pugh, like a Kalia Watt, and then they'll run at you 1v1 and you're in trouble. So if Orlando can just accept that Chicago's gonna sit back on them, let us play through it a bit, I think they'll find a lot of success. Viciano with Peterson. Good two-person game there. Well-weighted ball for LaRue. LaRue centering it, and it's cleared. That was great from Orlando. It was a blind pass from LaRue, but right on the spot, intended for Taylor. What a buildup. Great combination play through the defensive midfield part. I love the little slip seam ball, and I don't mind that from LaRue, right? She knew that her players were in the box, and she knew that Chicago players were in the box. And so regardless, I'm sending this in. We're either going to get a corner kick or we're going to get a goal out of it. Krieger from the corner. And as a former forward yourself, you're telling your teammates, hey, I'm going to make this run. I'm going to play it to the near post. If you're not there this time, you'll make this run next time. Absolutely. And now there is something to be said about, you know, actually getting your head up and finding the runners in the box. But in a situation like that, you were already so deep in Chicago's defensive third and in your own attacking third that you knew that you had players in and around you. And you also were aware that Chicago was making runs back towards their own goal. That's always going to create some chaos and some kind of deflected balls that maybe lead to goals, maybe something close that ends up going out for a corner kick like it did. And, and that's that's the veteran mentality of a player like Cindy LaRue, to be able to differentiate between those situations. Do I get my head up or do I just send it in this time? Here comes Krieger. Similar run as last week at North Carolina when she assisted on LaRue's goal. This time she picks out Taylor. Taylor dispossessed. Great defending. Card coming out for that challenge. Yep. Taylor trying to slow down the counter attack and she took down Rachel Hill. Gives the referee a little, sir, yes, sir, I understand. That was absolutely a card. Rachel Hill is taking some knocks in this first half. From New Hampshire, played at UConn. Watt and Peterson. We've seen this confrontation quite a few times in this first half. Good cross from Watt. Halfway cleared by Krieger. And deep throw in for Chicago. Hill. Eight shots for Chicago, four for Orlando. 12 to four crossing advantage for Chicago. LaRue heads away. Olaprico. Top of the area. Away from Riley, cross from the left. Just a bit too high from Sarah Waldmo. Danielle Colabrico, by way of Freehold, New Jersey, played at Virginia entire career with Chicago Red Stars. Now in her seventh season, the former Rookie of the Year. Olaprico from the corner. Headed on, Harris makes the claim. Took some contact there. Amy Turner checks on her goalkeeper, Ashlyn Harris. 
Three minutes will be added on here at the end of the first half. The difference remains Jody Taylor's first goal for Orlando. John's daughter. Amy Turn. Krieger. Two straight games with an assist for Ali Krieger. Now Marta. Nago trying to get to halftime and regroup. Peterson dispossessed. Hard challenge. Decision time as Pew is taken out. Here comes a yellow card. I don't know how Turner argues that, honestly. I was literally just thinking the same thing. I mean, I would, I would put my hands down and just jog back to my spot. Because, I mean, you look at the game we just called, right, the earlier one, that would have been a red from the card or from the referee in that game. Now, from the replay, she does definitely get ball and, and leg, I will say. Mal Pugh did a good job to sell it a bit, but it's a card, no question. Amy Turner in the book. Chicago can take something for that first 15 minutes. Everything up until the goal was really bright for Chicago. Watt nearly scored. Her shot was cleared off the line by an Orlando defender. And you know, there, since the goal, there still have been bright spots for Chicago. Really, the attack just needs to be cleaned up a bit, right? The final ball just hasn't really been there. Or the final run just hasn't really been there. In my mind, the first 30 minutes, Chicago won this half, despite, you know, obviously that's not always how soccer works, and Orlando did have a goal before those first 30 minutes, but they just need to limit the transition more. That's exactly what I would tell my team going into half, limit that energy, limit that transition, continue to do the things that we were doing in the first 20 minutes, which was pressing high and locking teams in. And although Chicago had bright moments, it is Orlando who got the goal. They executed that next play speed mentality that Becky Burley was talking about. She was brought here to score goals and she gets her first for Orlando. Jody Taylor from Ali Krieger. And Orlando is in front. Halftime in the weekend finale for the NWSL. Watt came close. Taylor did not make a mistake. Halftime in the Windy City. Orlando with the goal advantage on the road. Halftime at Seat Geek Stadium in Bridgeview. Orlando with a goal from Jody Taylor. Leading one to nothing, her first goal with the pride. Let's look back at a busy Saturday in the NWSL beginning in New Jersey. Gotham unbeaten in eight, hosting North Carolina Courage. And here is a goal from Speck. Yes, yeah, Speck gets her first assist on the season last weekend. She gets her first goal this weekend. She's starting to perform with a lot more consistency. You can just see the celebration. This was a huge win for North Carolina. I mean, a big three points to jump Gotham in the standings, and they looked good. They're a team that when they play through those flanks, they play through those outside backs, they create a lot of chances. Amy Rodriguez is still trying to get her first goal for her new club, and Jess McDonald was knocking on the door for 50 career goals. But Gotham wasn't without doing some really good things on their own. Pinto on that header. Didasco was absolutely phenomenal, as she always is, through that game. A lot of stuff runs through her. So an unfortunate loss for Gotham, a great win for Courage to continue in their form through the stretch. 
club record eight game unbeaten runs over for Gotham. And meanwhile, this was from the 15 year old Olivia Moultrie and a wonderful headed goal for the opener. A spectacular ball by any player, much less a 15 year old, perfectly bent into the run of Simone Charlie. And then 71st minute, we see a whoo, missile strike from the top of the box. Sayori Takarado off the bar. A frustrating one nothing loss for Washington. Now Portland, it's most points their 13 games in club history. O.L. Reign scored five in the first half, beginning with this here in the sixth minute. You know, those other games were cool, but this was the game that got all of the attention. Six goals in the first half. We saw that first one from Balser, and then, oh, what a nice little step over from Sofia Huerta. She's starting to play with so much confidence, getting her goal for the second one. And then Houston really does well to get themselves back in this game. It was 2-1 at this point on an own goal from Shea Groom, but after this, it's OL Reign all the way. 35th minute, and who is it other than Leso Mare? The veteran, she saw two last weekend. She sees another one. All that girl knows how to do is score. Then Jess Fishlock, this is a stunner from 35 yards. Top bins only. <laughs> I'm telling the coach to take me out for the rest <laughs> of the game. My job is done. And then if you thought the first half was over, uh, you'd be wrong. Balser says, I think I want to add another one. She's a player that seems to only score in two. So well done by Bethany Balser. It's Balser, Hatch, and LaRue top the NWSL golden boot chart. Half time in Bridgeview. How will the weekend end in the NWSL? Chicago, winners of four out of five, down a goal. More from halftime after this. Great to see the youth players at a professional soccer game in Chicago. Chicago Red Stars and Orlando at halftime. The prime leading one to nothing. Matt Peterson, the former University of Georgia forward. Marion Crowder. And early on in this one, it was all Chicago. It was all Chicago through really the first 15 minutes. They won those first 15 minutes. They came out hot, and it really felt like it was just going to be a matter of time before you saw a ball go in the back of the net for the Chicago Red Stars team. But to all of our surprises, it was Orlando who got the momentum going they got a goal against the run of play, which is what you see now. A beautiful ball from Allie Krieger over the top to Jody Taylor, doing what she was brought here to do, and that is score goals. Could not have been a more clinical finish from number nine to put Orlando up one nil against the run of play and send them into the locker room with a lot of confidence. And then 29th minute, Mallory Pugh came very close. It was Chicago for the first 15, and really for the next 15 after the goal. They continued to do what they wanted to do. They pressed high, they were creative in their attack, and they have just failed to find the back of the net. But Orlando right now is finding good pockets of space. They're exploiting Chicago in those transitional moments, and that's something that Chicago's really gonna have to be aware of in the second half if they want a chance to get three points. The last chance came from Rissa Vigiano for Orlando. Orlando, somewhat surprising, a possession advantage from that first half. Yeah, but you know, Chicago is a team that is okay with not having the ball because they want that defensive shape locked down and tight, which is something they're gonna be all the more aware of going into the second 45 minutes of play. Chicago has three comeback wins on the year. Can they find a fourth? We'll find out in the next 45 minutes. Chicago trying to stay in the top three of the NWSL standings on this rainy night in the Windy City. We'll come back for the second half from Bridgeview after this. Set for the second half from Bridgeview. Orlando leading one to nothing. 
And Orlando with the kickoff, attacking from left to right in the white uniforms. Matt Peters, same with former University of Georgia and USU 20 national team forward, Marion Crowder. What do you expect from these teams we see the change? McLernan comes on for Ali Riley. First change made by Becky Burley, a halftime sub for the outside back. What are you expecting from these two coming out of the break? From Chicago, I really am just expecting more of the same. It wasn't like they had poor execution of their game plan in the first half. Their game plan was to press high, press deep, lock them in to their attacking third, and then just be creative with our front three, and that's exactly what they did. The one thing that they didn't hone in on that cost them was limiting that energy, that transitional ab ability of Orlando, and that's what cost them the goal. So there's not much that Chicago needs to change other than really cleaning up the attacking third a little bit and just continuing to push forward with the game plan they had before this. And then Orlando, I could see this, to be honest, two different ways. They have had a lot of success combining down the flank so far through this first 45 minutes and kind of finding that delayed run of their midfielders joining into the attack. You know, we've seen shots from the top of the box. We've seen some good services from them. But there's also a sense of some kind of reserved energy from Orlando that they may be okay with just scoring one, and they may sit back a little bit and let Chicago try and possess around them. Watt away from Krieger. Nice touch from Watt. She knew what she was doing, just played it off the foot of Krieger for a corner. And that was a prime example of one thing that Orlando is going to be really cognizant of this second half is just the athletic ability of that Chicago front three in Hill, in Pew, and in Watt. And so do you risk sending numbers forward and continuing to push further up the field, or do you kind of play a little bit more reserved of a game? That, that's a call for Becky Burley, and I can see it go either way. Pew from the corner. Headed back in. Well, safe by Harris had the near post covered up. Morgan Gatra came close. I love that header from her. It really wasn't intended to be on goal. It did make Harris make a save, but all she was trying to do right there was take that back post delivery from Mallory Pugh and just head it back into that swarm of three players you see right there for a little touch into the goal, but ends up making Harris make a save for another corner. Danielle Colaprico from the opposite corner. Headed back in the mix, Gatra again, alive for Chicago, and Krieger with a half clearance. Gatra runs into the referee, Luis Guardia, a bit frustrated there. She thought she could have scored. Yeah, she wanted that one-time big finish. Your eyes get wide in that moment. You see a ball like rolling back to you perfectly, and you're like, I am about to just crush this. <laughs> That's what she wanted. And then you hit the referee. Yeah, and then you hit the referee. <laughs> Chicago outscored its opponents 10-5 during the recent run. Four wins out of five. Good turn of pace from Pew. Just past Watt. Watt from Draper, Utah, played at North Carolina, originally number two pick of the Houston Dash before I traded Chicago a couple years ago. Peterson. Uh, Jan's daughter just does not mind receiving the ball in those pressure pack situations. No, she's very good with the ball at her feet and, and can make a lot happen with two, three players around her. Yeah, so often you'll see a center back or the goalkeeper and she just comes to relieve the pressure. You need that, right? She, she, is, she is your point guard. She is the person that's like, yo, Give me the ball, I can control the pace of this game, I can control the tempo, I don't mind breaking a press type of mentality. That's the kind of player she is. Here she is, slowing the game down, earning a free kick. I like that from Gatral, she just gives a little hand wave at the referee. Like, come on man, just let me play. She's still mad at him. <laughs> And here you can kind of see the tempo. You mentioned it. Orlando might be satisfied with one. They might try to leave Bridgeview with a, a goal and maybe three points. 
they're going to try to take the rhythm and the air out of this game in the second half. Exactly. I could not have said it better. I, I, you're with, you're playing against a red hot Chicago team and a team that is very capable of taking you in 1v1 battles. As Watt does right here, Watt centers it. Krieger with the block and now it's clear. Watt's been excellent turning those edges in those 1v1 situations. Just feels like a matter of time now for Chicago. Exactly, you know, but we felt like that really from the moment that the game started. You know, there was a, a corner kick opportunity in just the second minute. A lot of shots that were created from Chicago in the first 15. Orlando got that goal against the run of play. But it's like I said, Chicago hasn't done poorly on their execution. Their efficiency needs to be cleaned up, right? Their their final pass, their final run, that needs to be cleaned up in the attack for sure. But they've just got to keep pushing. And sometimes that sounds so simple, but sometimes what you're doing is exactly what you should be doing. It's just a matter of trusting the process and finding that result, finding the back of the net. And this feels like a game, Marion, where if you look at one step but didn't watch the game, you'd be misled because yeah. possession, 55% for Orlando. They've had a lot of the ball, but a lot of it's in their own half. Right. A lot of it in the middle part of the field. Chicago, with that 45%, has created way more chances going the other way. Hugh leaves it. Watt lays it back. Could close that time. Another hard tackle. Tackle's flying here in the 53rd minute. McLernan had the initial win off the bench. There's Colaprico for Chicago. Phoebe McLernan from Westchester, Pennsylvania, played at University of Virginia. Dispossessed here, Pew won it. Taylor does well. Vigiano, a break for Orlando. LaRue will keep it in play. Vigiano for Orlando. Peterson. Doherty Howard. Peterson, good turn. Doherty Howard has three runners in the box. Colaprico will lead the Chicago counter attack with Mallory Pugh, first time ball. Intended for what? All the way to Harris. I like that idea. One thing that I'm noticing very quickly in this first half is really how much the win is affecting the Orlando attack. That ball in from Do Doherty Howard, you could see the intent was definitely to that back post and a little bit deeper into the box, and that win is just taking it back and back. So that's something to be really aware of in this second half. Aaron, when we spoke with Rory Dames this week about when Chicago's at its best, he said, when we're at our best, we're up the field, turning the ball over and leading to opportunities. As good as Chicago has played, have they turned the ball over enough here tonight? I really don't think they've needed to. That's that's the thing. You know, it, it, you said that thing about the possession stat, and yeah, I mean, that's shocking to me because the possession from Chicago Ha, may not have be as much, but it is way more purposeful, right? And it's making things happen. And so they haven't necessarily created that many turnovers, but they've just done so well with when they do have the ball, they're, they're just threading balls through these seams and they're getting deep into the Orlando attack. It truly is just the efficiency in the final third. They've probably had probably double digit crosses now. And I would say maybe three of them have connected. Sustained pressure here from Chicago. Trying to find the tying goal. 10 minutes into the second half. 
Bertrand goes down. She was fouled. She's been very active. We've seen her central and on both flanks. LaRue committed the foul. As you said, 19 crosses for Chicago, five for Orlando. Been a tough night for Morgan Catra. She had the contact lens issue yeah. in the first half. She had the collision with the referee, Luis Guardia, early in this half. That time, Sidney LaRue fouls her. And she's pinned up against the line here, makes a great cut back. And then, yeah, Sydney LaRue just gets that back foot. You, you could see her after that play just kind of crawling, you know, a few steps forward. And I, I think it was just that back right foot of hers that Sydney LaRue's tackle got most of. Megan Blackburn, the head athletic trainer for Chicago, assessing Morgan Gutras, Rory Dames, gives instructions to his side, and Becky Burley in her second game in charge on the Orlando side. Now, Becky Burley was on vacation when she got the call and the invitation to take over as interim head coach. And when she got the call, she thought it would be more of, hey, help us lead this coaching search. She didn't expect them to ask her to be the interim head coach. And that's just the humility of Becky Burley. Everyone probably else but her knew that that's why they were calling her. You know, it was her plan to really understand this Orlando side to me is very impressive and, and very thoughtful. You know, she said this entire team has been great about giving us feedback. We've done three in three group meetings. We've done individual meetings. We're going to do more of those next week because we want to get the core of the players and what they want this team identity to be. Free kick coming for Chicago from the right side. Lansing header. Kept alive by Hill. Krieger heads away. Krieger clears. Doherty Howard. There's Amanda Duffy, the Orlando Pride Executive Vice President, who called. Becky Burley, obviously local, just retired in Gainesville at the end of the season. She had to cut her vacation a day or two short to get going and had a practice or two before the draw at North Carolina. Marta from distance, blocked by Gordon. All of it happened in about 48 hours for Becky Burley coming out of retirement. Yeah, we asked to give her the, we said, Becky, can you just give us, you know, the Spartans version of how you got here? She said, well, that really is the only version available. <laughs> it happened that fast. All the way back to Cassie Miller. mentioned the shape change. They went to the 3-5-2 to combat the box midfield of North Carolina. They got the draw on the road. And we asked if there's been any specific leaders who have stepped up in the transition. And she said, really, the whole team. Said, we've had meetings, groups of three. We'll get to meetings one-on-one. -on -one. But everyone has been welcoming. Everyone has been positive, helping her understand the nuances and the tendencies of this group. And I think that's a very humble approach from a head coach. You know, it, she could have gone in there and just been like, I, I want to play this way, and this is what we're going to do. I'm the person in charge. And some coaches do that. But instead, Becky Burley understands that this, these players, the way they want to play, I need to take that into consideration. And I need to figure out what makes each one of these players tick so that I can get the best out of them. Bumper cars there with Pugh against Vigiano, who had her shirt. Cross coming, blocked by Krieger. 
I understand Pugh's frustration. That was a clear jersey tug from Vigiano right in front of the referee. There have been a couple from Pew like that, just kind of on the blind side of the referee. That one was dead in front of his face. Here's Pew crossing, and it's covered by Harris. But you can see maybe a retroactive booking for that after the fact. As Vigiano was grabbing her jersey for a few steps. Marta. Try to find the diagonal ball for LaRue. Too far. Claimed by Cassie Miller. Good pressure from Taylor Miller just away in time. Marta. Earns the free kick, Woldmo frustrated. And that's tough because on one end you have Mallory Pugh who stays on her feet, has her jersey tug, no whistle. On the other end, less of a foul, Marta falls down and the whistle's blown. You know, Matt, I am thinking the exact same thing. I would be frustrated if I was Waldmo as well. If I'm Mallory Pugh, I've given him an earful. Because we want to see as neutrals, what Mallory Pugh did. She stays on her feet. She's trying to make a play in the game. Yeah, in your final third. And there's no advantage there. She had four players in front of her to beat, to get a goal. Well, you saw the change there. End of the line for Morgan Gatra, who was receiving treatment. She was replaced by Zoe Gorowski, another Illinois native who played at UCLA. And now two changes for Becky Burley. Taylor Korniak comes on, and Erica Timrak as well. Jordy Howard goes off. Orlando thinks they should have a corner kick to Jan's daughter, instead it's a goal kick. It's actually Katie Johnson, the former USC Trojan, who came on for Morgan Gatra. Game getting very physical here around the hour mark. Labrico. Waldmo, excellent. Too far for Gordon, she'll run it down. Gordon extending her consecutive minute streak, a club record for Chicago. She'll pass 3,100 consecutive minutes tonight. Harris will kill some time. And it looks like Orlando is, is going to be okay with the one nil win. It seems that that's what they're after, just with, with the energy, the tempo that they're setting right now. And you mentioned how physical it's getting, and that's exactly what you want to do if you're Orlando, right? So Chicago is a team attacking specifically that they're very flowy, right? They're rhythmic. They're not going to really be a team that's just boom, boom, boom. We have a plan and we're going here. They're, they're going to figure it out. They're going to they're really going to move with what they see. They have a lot of freedom in their attack, and that's a really good thing. But so when you start throwing these kind of kinks in the speed of play, when you start getting physical with a team that likes to play that way, it really starts to be a struggle for a team like Chicago to kind of figure out what those spaces now look like because you're having so many stops and starts and so many just kind of it's just not allowing you to play as flowy as you'd like to. Well put. Mott out wide here, good turn. 
Advantage play, that's Johnson. There's one of those fouls we're talking about. That has to be a booking. Maybe not, but that's a player in open field trying to make an entry to the final third clearly taken down. I mean, I'm not really understanding this because in the in the first half, there was... I, are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, in the first half, there were several things that, that the bookings, you know, I agreed with or, you know, maybe he was trying to let the game breathe a bit. I get that. But you're getting deeper into the second half now, and this is the team that's down. Pugh's delivery headed straight in the air, cleared by Marta. And this is, that was now, I think, the third occasion in, the row, in a row where the foul has just been very blatant and obvious in your face. And so to not get a booking for that one, I just don't really understand. Hill, good work from Hill. Bounced on two defenders. Wide to the right, here comes the cross. Nearly there for Pew. Good defensive header to send it wide. Pew, good fake. Still on her feet. Mots joins. Mots earns a corner. Corner kick for Chicago. Headed away. Kaylee Watt will take it to the corner against Tim Rack, who just entered. Watt to the end line. Good cross, headed straight in the air. Now LaRue's done a good job defending crosses here tonight. Seventh corner kick of the match tonight for Chicago. Colaprico delivers. Watts waiting for it. Still five in the box. Watt against Krieger. Cleared by Korniak. How well defended that was from Allie Krieger. You saw Kalia watch. She wanted to get in line. She wanted to get that shoulder, and Krieger really just muscled her off in, in, in a great defensive way. No foul there at all. Very well done from the veteran. Malazzo keeps it in play. Hard challenge from Korniak. Big decision now for Luis Guardia. Colaprico down. Yellow card shot. I mean, at least. I mean, there was no ball to that. And she, that was a play that the defender is going in knowing she's not going to get the ball, right? That is absolutely an immediate booking. I think she's lucky to avoid red. I, I do too. It studs up, the legs extended. Polaprico. No ball in sight. Cannot get out of the way. No. And because at that point, Colaprico had turned her back. So a, a completely helpless attacker on the ball. I believe we just had a. An assistant for Rory Dames was just sent off. So here, I mean, that is no intention on getting the ball. That, that is straight tackle on the player, studs up. And I think that's why the coaching staff from Chicago 
got a card was because they thought it was an immediate red, an immediate send off. And Cola Preco is in a lot of pain right now, having to be helped off the field by the trainer and Mallory Pugh. So there, Scott Parkinson or Caprice Catra sent off from the assistance for Rory Dames. But I mean, that for me, and there's another card shot. But we saw it leading up to this. There was those momentary moments where Orlando was getting away with things. The jersey tug from Vigiano on Mallory Pugh. The other challenge on the other side of the field that was not shown a yellow. And then it leads to this part where the players feel like they can get away with it maybe a little bit more. And it leads to moments like this. And I'm just going to be completely honest. I don't understand any of this. I, I don't understand how you let it get to that point when it was very capable as a referee to keep it within your control if you would have just pulled out some cards a little bit earlier. And then you're right, right? Some players get comfortable. He's not going to card me. He's not going to make that mistake. And then you spend your effort as a referee carding the coaching staff or protecting their players. You know, for, for me, that's backwards. I think you spend the energy controlling the game and you let the coaching staff if you control the game, the coaching staff typically minds their business, right? And so I, I'm a bit disappointed in the way that the center referee handled that because I think if you keep the player safe, then there's no need for a coaching staff to get a card in that moment. Multiple changes. We saw Doniak came on. Stevens. Lubert for Rachel Hill. Corner from Pew. It was touched. It's a corner again for Mallory Pugh. Paprika replaced by Stevens. Pugh's corner. Punched away. Another corner kick coming. That was Katie Johnson. And it is actually a goal kick. Now, if you're Chicago, though, it is so important for you to take a breath, right? Things have not gone your way in the last several minutes. You maybe feel like the referee is not on your side and that you're not going to get lucky. But that right there is exactly what you don't want to do, right? He has shown that he is going to give Marta a foul if Marta gets a foul, right? So be aware of that. Just know where you're standing, know the kind of referee he is now, and allow yourself a moment to just collect your breath, collect your mentality, and realize you still have a good ways to go in this game, and you're only down one goal, right? Let's focus on what we can do to get our, our momentum, our rhythm back. And for a team like Chicago, that's not adding to the stoppage time. It's getting away from it. It's controlling the tempo. It's controlling the game. And it's having more of that flowy, that rhythmic style of play. Johnson wins it back. Marta back from the Olympics. Holds the Orlando record, 24 regular season goals, plus 13 assists. Nice from Johnson. It's going to be a free kick for Chicago. Johnson, a great career at USC, helped the Trojans win the national title in 2016, scored twice against West Virginia in the final. See Dames give instructions. Gordon will restart. Doniak nearly there. Harris gets there first. All right, so you've been in these situations before, Marion Crowder. You're down a goal. Maybe you feel like referee's not helped your team out. How do you uh, fight through it and battle through and remain professional in this mindset? It's just about controlling what you can control, right? You were the better team for the first 15 minutes. Orlando has done well to disrupt 
your energy and what you want to do. So credit to them in that regard. But if you're Chicago, you know that you have the ability. One, you have the home side to your advantage, right? You have a great crowd here. And then two, you know that you have the ability to win a lot of these 1v1 battles on the field, the deeper that this game goes. And so you ha just have to really, truly collect yourself and realize that we've done some good things. We still have a lot of time left to play, and there's no need to start rushing what we want to do. Let's come back together as a unit. Let's look around at each other. Maybe, you know, this is that moment where you kind of try to find some eye contact with the players around you, and you just, you know, you, you give that nod, you give that understanding of, all right, things haven't gone our way, but we're good. We're good. We still have some time to play. Oh, it's a Chicago throw it. Vigiano wins it. Tim Rack. Harris. Good touch. Johnson. Great balance from Johnson. Rides out the challenge from Jan's daughter. Shot blocked on the edge of the area. Another well defended, potentially harmful situation from the Chicago attack. It was well defended by Orlando. They had a player attached to Johnson's hip, and then their center backs did a great job of stepping forward. That's a good ball. Doniak's in, three runners to her right. Doniak at the end line against Krieger. Low delivery swept aside. Again, that's Amy Turner. She's had a good night. Partnering Krieger. Slide near the corner, Johnson back to her feet. It's a throw in for Chicago. I'm kind of surprised to see Korniak make that tackle, to be honest, knowing that you're sitting on a yellow. But that is something we knew about this Orlando team, right? And that Chicago was very aware of. They bring a level of energy and a level of intensity to the game that is, is really hard to play through. Well, Rory Dames told us, he said, you don't know what to expect with the coaching change, a new system, players motivated. He said, throw out the winless run. He pointed to 2019, Chicago could have won the supporter shield and they lost twice to Sky Blue after Sky Blue had made a coaching change. Sometimes the team with the change gets a little boost from the new coach and players trying to make an impression on that new coach. Exactly, you know, we were talking about how KC specifically in our last game, you know, they have three new players and you can tell that there is a better level of energy from them and it's about that fresh perspective, that fresh new mind. Well, that's exactly what a coaching change can offer you as well. And it definitely seems that these players have responded well so far in the last two matches to Becky Burley. The energy level from them has been fresh. I mean, <laughs> we keep saying it, but that's exactly what it has been. And they seem like they want to play for her. Tim Rack wins it behind Marta. Marta with the diagonal. Just enough on the headed clearance from Malazzo. LaRue against Malazzo. LaRue! And it's tipped over the bar by Cassie Miller. I like that from Cindy LaRue. You know, we haven't talked about her much. She really hasn't touched the ball all that much this game, but she doesn't need to touch it a lot to be really dangerous. I like that decision to go to the near post instead of sending that service in. Because what I think you'll see in this replay is that the goalkeeper started to cheat just a bit and it opened up that little window between her right shoulder and that, and that near post that Sidney LaRue was trying to find. Gets a corner kick out of it. Marta from the corner. Caught by Miller. That was the second corner of the night for Orlando. Throw into Orlando. 
And this is where Orlando seems like they're almost just playing for throw-ins. They're trying to just keep it on the sideline and content with just managing the game, keeping it in the wide areas. And that's not a bad strategy by any means because they came into this game knowing that Chicago, to win this game, they needed to disrupt the rhythm of the Chicago Red Stars team. And when you stop the play so much, that's exactly what you're doing. So it's absolutely not a bad strategy. And up to this point, it is really working in their favor. Gordon. Too long on the switch. Visit nwslshop.com to find your club's latest gear. Support your favorite NWSL club with the latest tees, sweatshirts, hats, novelties, and more. B.B. McClernan, the substitute, came on at halftime for Ali Riley. Nice turn from LaRue. Wide for Peterson. Peterson trying to feed it to Korniak. Jan's daughter, Korniak, too far for LaRue. Miller will roll it out to Gordon. Great confidence from Gordon. Wide for Watt. Off the back of Vigiano. Watt for Chicago against Peterson. Back to her left. Low cross. It's through everybody. And out for a goal kick. That's one of those where everyone kind of thought that someone else was going to go for it, and then it just turns out to be a goal kick. So not what they wanted out of that. But good quality service in. There were plenty of players around. Orlando has been great defensively through these last 25 minutes or so. They have really done a good job of marking players and not space. Sometimes you'll see teams give up goals and concede goals because they get caught watching the ball, right? And they get stuck in this, this area of space when space doesn't score goals, players do. And so I think Orlando has done a top-notch job of making sure that they're not concerned with whatever space is available. They have been attached at the hip to a Chicago player for every single service that's come in. Good to see Danielle Colaprico back on the Chicago bench. Jody Taylor, 15th minute goal assisted by Ali Krieger. That's the difference in this one. Think about the biggest plays in this game. I think back to that save from Ashlyn Harris against Mallory Pugh later in that first half. Full stretch to tip it wide. That would have tied things up for Chicago. Marta, Korniak. Marta has space. Long run for Marta. Korniak's offside. Six minutes plus stoppage time left for Chicago to get a goal back. Taniak, Harris, Watt wins it. Four in the box for Watt, good cross. Late arriving, nearly there, would have been a tying goal. Sarah Luber did her best with the outstretched leg. Yep, she wanted that one really bad. And boy, has Clea Watt just had a game. She has been involved in almost every single attacking moment for Chicago. But like we talked about, yeah, Sarah Lubert got a touch on that one, but who was right next to her? An Orlando defender. I mean, they have done so well to track their runners in the box. Pew from the corner. 
Harris crowded, but still punches away. Watt gets on the end of it, back in the mix, deflected for another corner. And look, let me tell you something, that is not an easy save to make. I feel like we're spoiled in the NWSL with the amount of quality goalkeeping that we see. And we've seen Ashton Harris make two big saves. That one was not easy because of just the amount of players around her to come out, come up over, over those players, no hesitation, and punch that away. Excellent goalkeeping from her. The 11th corner kick tonight for Chicago. Pew will deliver. Watt waiting for it on this opposite side. Here comes Marta to clear. Throw in for Chicago. Watt right back to Lubert, who couldn't quite settle it. Now, Lubert's a great story. She commuted two hours each way for practice at St. Louis Scott Gallagher from Jefferson City, Missouri. Great club, St. Louis Scott Gallagher. She played at Missouri and decided to continue playing soccer. She was offered a chance to be a teacher's assistant in calculus class and attend graduate school for free while getting an MBA at Missouri. But the opportunity to play for Chicago presented itself and after a three-week preseason stint offered a two-year contract by Rory Dames. Timrak, great switch for Marta. Marta has LaRue. Korniak, Korniak, nice turn. Could not keep it down. I love that little cut back from her. She did so well to keep herself collected with the player in front of her. She could have just blasted that first time, but instead she collects it. She cuts it back to her left, finds that open window. Still goes over the bar, but that's how good Orlando can be so quickly, right? They can lull you to sleep. They don't mind playing defense. They don't mind not having the ball, but then they can break lines of pressure so quickly. And that transitional moment was pure quality from them. McLernan. Got a Jan's daughter. Vigiano with Courtney Peterson. Oh, nice win. Seemed like Peterson would take it to the corner. Tatum Malazzo wins it back for Chicago. Cassie Miller. 48 shutouts in her career at Florida State, third most in NCAA history. Here comes Gordon. I love her push forward when she's on the ball. Katie Johnson. Just too far behind Donnie Acker Watt. Timrak now. Pew may have hurt herself trying to. Win the ball back from Timrak. You see her behind the play, stretching. Here's LaRue, well-timed run, has marked it to her right. LaRue has scored! Sydney LaRue, her seventh of the season, and that will put the game away for Orlando. Absolutely. Man, the excitement from Sydney LaRue on that. Not only does she put this game away, but she is now the sole leader for most goals scored so far this season. Erica Timrak, what a great substitution she was last weekend. What a great substitution she has been this weekend. And the one thing Chicago said about Orlando in our calls this week, we have to be aware of their transitional ability. We have to be aware of their energy. And those were the two reasons, that was the reason that those two goals happened for Orlando. Both moments of transition and both just quality execution. No, maybe they haven't had as many chances in the final third as Chicago has, but their execution in the final third has been above and beyond better than Chicago this game. Well done. I like the early strike from LaRue there. As the goalkeeper is closing, can't really get her feet set. She hits it early. She's just a clinical finisher, especially from that left side.
Kylie Strom will check in. She'll replace Courtney Peterson. Strom played at Boston University. She's from Endicott, New York. Late change here for Becky Burley in the first seconds of second half stoppage time. There's Becky Burley, a few minutes away from her first win as a head coach at the professional level. Alan Kirkup, her longtime assistant, also now her assistant with Orlando. Pew! Just over the bar from the top of the area. Pugh thought it was touch. She'll plead her case, thinking it should be a Chicago corner. A good little thread from Watt to Pew on that little combination. Pew just gets under it to sail this one high. She's telling the referee to open his eyes. I will say, you know, you've seen the harder tackles have been towards Chicago, but we have seen players on both sides of this game tonight very much questioning, you know, the decisions of the referee this game. It's been, it's been a controversial game, that's for sure. Thirty-sixth career NWSL goal for Sydney LaRue. And you mentioned Watt earlier. It hasn't been for lack of effort her tonight. She has been from the first minute involved in many of these Chicago attacks. Same for Pew. She had a great save from Harris that kept her goal out. You know, I don't think it, it has been a lack of effort, you know, for anyone on Chicago, really. You know, they, their execution, truly what it comes down to, their execution in the final third wasn't as clean as it needed to be. But sometimes you just have to give credit where credit is due. And Orlando has come and faced a lot of things. They played on the road. They're coming against a red hot Chicago team and they have executed and managed this game, especially this second 45 minutes, much better than Chicago has. But the effort from Chicago has been there, absolutely. Chelsea Washington replaces Marta. We saw the Chelsea Washington fan club in the stands yeah. earlier today. She played at Bowling Green State University, so maybe some friends or youth players from that area made the drive up to Chicago. Courtney Akron's a free kick. Two of the veterans on this team, Jody Taylor, her first of the year, Cindy LaRue, her seventh. That's the difference, two moments of magic from Taylor and LaRue. Tim Reck. Back for Cassie Miller. Sarah Lubert. Rides out a challenge. Good step. Well read that time. Whole time in Chicago. A frustrating night for the Chicago Red Stars, a clinical night for Orlando. Rory Dame shaking hands 
with Becky Burley, who earns her first NWSL win as a head coach. And there's a smile for Jody Taylor, her first Orlando Pride goal. And a new Golden Boot leader in Sydney Larue, who sealed things with her seventh of the year. Yeah, what what a credit to this Orlando side. A really quality win. They've dealt with so much adversity. It's been a coaching change. They've played on the road. They were playing a really, really on fire Chicago team who was finding good form, especially in the attacking third. And it was some controversial refereeing for both sides. So what happened for Orlando that didn't happen for Chicago? They were more clinical in the final third and they managed the game much better, especially through that second 45 minutes. The two goal scorers exchanging pleasantries. A clean sheet for Ashlyn Harris. And a good one here to end this NWSL weekend. Orlando snaps its winless run. Full time from Chicago, two nothing Orlando. We wrap it up after this. Full time in Chicago, Orlando goes on the road and wins two nothing over Chicago. As we get to the highlights, Matt Peterson with Marion Crowd of the former University of Georgia and US U20 national team forward. And Becky Burley on the road for the second straight time. Tough to start your coaching career on the road back to back, but she had a good game plan going into this one. And here in the 15th minute, Krieger over the top for Jody Taylor. And what an incredible finish from Taylor. That full sprint comes to a dead stop. And just the realization to know where the goalkeeper is without having to pick up your head and tuck that one into the back post. Absolute quality from her, really from Orlando the entire night in the final third. Sydney LaRue forcing this save from Cassie Miller, a warning shot in some ways from LaRue. And I like that idea from her, not to send it across the face of goal, but to keep the goalkeeper honest and see if she couldn't get something in that near post. But it was this, the nail in the coffin for Chicago and the seventh goal on the season for Sydney LaRue. The best way to describe Orlando tonight was clinical. Clinical in their game plan execution, clinical in their final third execution, and that's what gets them the 2-0 victory on the road tonight. Such a cheeky goal from LaRue. She peeks at the goalkeeper as Miller's coming out. No touch, just first time on goal seven on the year. Yep, she is now in lone contention of that golden boot. So congratulations to her. This shucks some things up in the table. You know, Orlando came into this below the playoff line. Now they are well in the middle of the pack with 20 points. And this for them will be the confidence when they need to get back in that form we saw them in at the beginning of the season. Yeah, pretty incredible. North Carolina to Houston separated by four points here halfway through the season. It was a good one, it was an exciting one, and in the end, the more clinical team got the full spoils. For Marion Crowder, Karina Dolan, and our entire crew, my name is Matt Peterson saying so long. A goal for Jody Taylor, a league leading seventh goal for Sydney LaRue, and Orlando gets a first win for Becky Burley. Good night, full time, Orlando two, Chicago nothing.